and welcome. Up till now in our conversation about bonding, we have been focusing on single bonds and ignoring any double or triple bonds. But now we want to take a little bit uh, deeper look and see how we form those double bonds and how we count them. So the first bond formed when between two atoms is called a sigma bond. Okay, that's the Greek letter sigma. It looks something like this. The key here is, is that the electron density in the bond is always centered between the atoms. So the overlap, whoops, that's an N. The overlap would be between two S orbitals, like in hydrogen, all it has is S orbitals. It could be between an S and a P, as long as they were facing one another. So you'd have a P like this and an S here, and it has to be centered between the atoms. It could be two Ps. So again, as long as they are head-on centered between the two atoms. Uh, and then you can get overlap of Ds as well. And that's what a sigma bond is. It's simply the first bond formed, always the first bond formed. The second and third bonds are called pi bonds. Here what we're looking at are non-hybridized p orbitals. So if I have an s P hybridization, I still have two P atomic orbitals with electrons in them, and there can be overlap there. If I have an sp2, I still have a P that has an electron in it with possible overlap. So that's what we want to be looking at. Um, in this case, the electron density either is above and below So if you've got carbon and carbon, you have pi, you have a p, excuse me, p orbitals, p orbitals, and we're going to have overlap above and below. And the electron plays, so to speak, in that um, arena. Or behind and in front. And this I won't be able to draw as well, but I'm going to give it a try. All right, forgive my drawing. You can do some Googling and get some nice ones of this, right? So we would have another P that goes behind and in front, behind and in front, and then we're going to get overlap behind and in front, okay? Remember, our sigma bond is already between the two atoms, okay? Now, let's take a look at counting some of these and it gives you some insight into organic chemistry and how to do shorthand of their models. Uh, organic chemistry is notorious for only providing a skeleton of a structure. So you have to make sure you evaluate the structure carefully. Carbon is always going to have four bonds. Nitrogen is going to have three bonds and one non-bonded pairs. So let's say three peripheral atoms, one non-bonded pair, four peripheral atoms. That's our A, B, E notation. Oxygen is going to have two bonded, two non-bonded. Okay, so you always want to double check. So let's evaluate caffeine here. And if we did this, what you have to be careful of is one, Organic chemists just put a bend where there's a carbon. So you have to add carbons at all the bends. Okay. The other thing they do is they often neglect hydrogens. So this carbon has three bonds, one, two, three, one to each hydrogen, four. So that's good. Oxygen has two bonds, therefore it must have two pairs. Oxygen, two bonds, two pairs. Nitrogen, one, two, three bonds and a pair. Nitrogen, one, two, three bonds and a pair. Okay, nitrogen, one, two, three bonds and a pair. Look at this carbon. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds, but this carbon only has one, two, three. Organic chemists assume you're smart enough to put a hydrogen there. Okay, so I 
got snagged a picture, literally, I use a program called Snagit that I love, that gave us a little bit more detail. So now let's go through and count our sigma bonds. So we've got the first bond's always sigma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. So if I counted right, I have twenty-six sigma bonds. Now let's look at the pi bonds. That would be the second bond form. So one of these two is a pi, one of those is a pi. I'm getting hungry. One of those is a pi, and one of those is a pi. So that's telling me I have four pi bonds. Okay, now if you wanted to do some sort of hybridization around that nitrogen, that nitrogen has two things hanging off of it, that carbon and that carbon, and it has an E, so this would be B plus E is 3, so it's an SP2 hybrid. Okay, This carbon has three things hanging off of it. It's an AB2 carbon, excuse me, an AB3 carbon, so I need an S, a P, and a P. It's SP2 hybridized. This carbon has four things. It's got three hydrogens and a nitrogen. So this is AB4. So I need an S, a P, a P, and a P. So I need an SP3. That would be SP3 hybridized. So tying together a couple of concepts there, hopefully making you more successful in chemistry. Thanks lots.